This is a real-time tutorial showing how I blended the different colors on Iron Man's faceplate. So the first thing that I do is start working on a small, small part of the face. And here you can see me adding saffron to uh, the side of the face where there's quite a lot of light. So it's just a small bit of color on this left-hand side of the face. And my lightest marker goes on saffron. Then I use apricot, which is the second uh, marker. And it's just a little bit darker than saffron. Uh, and then I start adding a little bit of amber, which is a, a brighter orange, and it's a bit darker than apricot. So I'm using three colors so far, and then I decided I needed to use a darker color, and for that I used raw sienna. Once I was happy with the colors that I was going to use, then I started doing some of the bigger, broader areas on the face mask. Uh, and here you can see me using downward strokes of the saffron, my lightest marker, because uh, Obviously what I'm trying to do is give the shiny effect of light uh, on the sort of metal faceplate. So I'm just doing these downward strokes, flicking the, the pen downwards so it, it sort of flicks upwards, leaving a sort of very, very fine line towards the end. Instead of uh, what you could do is when you're usually working with markers, you suddenly stop and then pick the marker up and it leaves a very thick end to the stroke of your marker. By doing the little flicks that you can see me doing here, uh, hopefully I won't get that thick end to the marker and it'll just look as though it gradually tapers and comes off the page quite quick. You can see me here also adding uh, amber which is this nice sort of darker orange and then what I do is I'll go back and I'll start to blend in the amber using the apricot. So each of the edges, there you go, you can see me doing it now. Each of the edges that I'm making between you know one marker and the next, I blend that edge in using the lighter marker afterwards. And again, here you can see me using a bit of saffron just to try and blend that apricot and that amber together. I sketch in the edges of his face mask here just to make it a bit easier for me because then I can break up the top section and the bottom section into two distinct parts that I can tackle separately. So here I am going in with my base color again, my lightest color, saffron, uh, and I'm basically going to give this area of the face mask a lot of saffron and then I'm going to put the other colors on top of it. I'm working quite quickly here so that hopefully uh, the saffron won't have dried by the time I start adding apricot and amber on top because if you work fast while your markers are still wet then a bit of the blending is kind of done for you because they're alcohol based markers so as you put them on they're, they're very wet and very fluid and they will blend together and run together a little bit without you even having to you know do much if you work quickly with them. Notice how when I put on my second color here, apricot, I don't go right to the edges of the fine line. I leave a little bit of the lightest color saffron showing through and that's just to suggest that this metal faceplate is a sort of 3D layer that is on top of the rest of his mask. So that little edge is where the light's catching it. Here you can see me using the saffron just to blend the edge of where I've just left off with the apricot marker where it meets the saffron. That little bit of extra saffron marker helps me blend the two together. As I add my third color here, you can see that I'm using it sparingly. It's where the darkest shadow areas on the face mask are going to be. So I'm using amber, the sort of dark orange color, just to sort of block in areas where I know I might have to put a little bit of the raw sienna, the darkest marker, later. You should be able to see as well the edges of it are blending in because I'm adding the markers on top of each other while they're still wet. So like I said, they are doing a bit of the blending for me, just along some of the edges. Where some of those edges aren't blending well enough, here you can see me go back to using my apricot marker, my sort of second color marker, and I'm using that to go along the edge of where I've just put the amber in the hopes of blending the two together and making a much more gradual change from light to dark and one color to another. This is a raw sienna going on and this is my fourth color, my deepest and darkest shadow. So I'm using this carefully. I don't overpower the picture with too much shadow, but I do want the shiny faceplate to have this idea of, you know, dark to light. It is looking quite solid and quite a strong contrast at the moment, so I know that I'm definitely going to have to go back in and use some of my um, previous colors here to blend that raw sienna back in. And here you can see me going over with uh, amber, so the dark orange color, just along the edges of the raw sienna, trying to blend it in a little bit so it's not such a strong contrast. Uh, and then I'll use the uh, apricot to go along the edges of the amber to blend that in a little bit. Again, all these markers going on, uh, while they're still wet. I'm not giving them a chance to dry and that helps them blend naturally together. 
What is good to see at this point is that the colors that I'm building up on the left hand side of the face mask uh, got a really good strong contrast and look way more shadowy than what I've got on the right hand side where I've left the bulk of that to be just like paper white, just raw white paper to be the highlights on the right hand side of his face mask. Happy with the top half of the face mask, I start working on the bottom half of the face mask and here I can break it up into sections. Uh, and what you can see me doing with the saffron marker, the lightest marker here, is I'm putting down a base coat down his cheekbone uh, and I can just do this as a separate um, part of the face mask. I'm using the apricot now to sort of build up the shadow, build up the tone on this part of the face and this is going to be in a bit more shadow so I'm going to be using most of the markers here uh, and I can build up here with amber which is the dark orange color but I'll leave the the sort of far left part of that cheekbone. I keep that nice and light because that's going to be jutting out and that's going to catch the light. And I continue using the amber, layering it up nice and dark towards the bottom part, to towards where he's going to have his jawline. Now you can see me using the raw sienna. And the raw sienna goes on and I can put these nice sort of upward strokes of the marker just underneath that sort of part where his, his cheekbone would you know, cast a lot of shadow, where there'd be no light getting at it. Then a little bit of amber just to blend those edges in again. So I'm laying up extra amber here just to blend the edges of the raw sienna. And that's looking quite successful. Quite happy with the way that I've got the shadow and the light areas. So as I start doing that part of the jaw, again I can break it up into just doing little sections because of the sort of angular nature of, of Iron Man's faceplate. And I put on saffron and I put on apricot and I use amber and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some uh, raw sienna just along that edge of where the jaw sort of curves over and becomes the front, becomes the chin part just to really emphasize that edge. I use a little bit more raw sienna here just to really emphasize that contrast between uh, that part of the jaw and then the chin and then I put a little bit extra uh, just down the cheekbone there because the colors are still wet so it's still going to blend in a little bit. His right hand jaw and cheekbone are facing the light source. So I'm deliberately going to try to only use the lightest colors out of my four colors here, out of my color palette. And I'm really going to try and avoid using any um, raw sienna if possible. So I'm going to rely a lot on just using saffron and apricot and maybe a bit of amber just to add a little bit of edge uh, and so on. But I don't really want to add too much of a dark color here. So you can see me layering up saffron, apricot, and amber and then using a bit of the saffron and the apricot again just to blend in those edges so it's a much more gradual change from uh, the light colors to the dark colors. I do use a little bit of raw sienna just here but you can see a lot less on this side of the face than on the other side and then I blend it back in using a bit of amber and a bit of apricot. You've probably noticed that what I'm doing is working on all the small areas first of all leaving that big fat large area of his face plate blank at the moment. That's the last bit I'm going to work on because that's the bit I'm most worried about because it's a large open area of paper. I'm going to have to do quite a lot of blending on that area to make it work and a bit you know, worried about how it's going to go. So doing all the smaller areas around that first just allows me to get lots of practice on blending these colors together so that hopefully I'll be more confident when I come to do that big main section. Just a quick note about the paper that I'm using here. I'm using quite a thick Bristol board type paper uh, to work on and it's good. It's, it's, uh, it's a little bit more of a smoother surface than some of the watercolor paper that I've been using recently and it actually does, because it's quite thick, allows you lots of time to put the colors on and uh, layer them up and blend them together, you know, a lot more than, you know, regular printer or regular sketchbook paper. So after a bit of procrastination, I've got to tackle that big fat main section. And I'm going to work on this the same way as I did the sort of top part of his forehead. I'm using saffron and I'm going to leave some nice bright white highlights where the light would be striking against this metal faceplate. I'm just going to leave those white, work around those with the saffron and also try and work nice and quick as you can see me doing these flicked upward strokes of the saffron here to, to get that sort of um, uneven edge which suggests where the light is hitting across his, uh, his cheekbone there. What I'm going to do is work nice and quick, keep those markers wet so that as I'm putting successive colors on top of it they will hopefully blend together a little bit more successfully. 
So I probably overdid it with the saffron here and probably should have used a little bit less and left a bit more of the paper white on this right hand side of his face. But there's nothing I can do about that as I'm going along. And because i got to work quick, I just don't worry about it. And I just pick up the apricot marker and I'm in there now adding the apricot on top of the um, saffron. But of course leaving a lot of that saffron showing along the edges. So I'm going to get that gradual change from um, my dark colors through my middle colors to my light colors. I am using a sort of streak down the middle which suggests that there would be a, a kind of a nose shape there. I was working from a reference photo here and, and it looked as though the light was striking across it and, and giving that kind of straight line down the middle like a nose. So I'm trying to do the same thing which means that I can keep that quite a sharp contrast and just have to blend my colors like I'm doing with the saffron right now. Blend the colors above and below that part of the face. So I'm just putting the finishing touches with the saffron here to blend in the apricot bits that I've just uh, put in. And then I start going to amber, which is my third and third darkest color, the sort of dark orange color. Uh, and I'm using that on top of uh, what is already saffron and already apricot. So it's going to look, you know, get nice and dark because it's already been layered up on top of two other colors. Uh, and you should notice that I'm deliberately keeping away from the uh, cheekbone on the left hand side so that it keeps this kind of uh, saffron color highlight deliberately not going near that with the rest of my marker colors. Here you can see me doing the upward strokes with the amber uh, just flicking those strokes upwards again so I don't have a solid sort of you know hard edged full stop type finish to my, uh, my marker strokes like you would do if you were using a brush uh, and then I get in there with apricot and I go over that edge of where the amber meets the apricot just trying to blend it in so it's a much more gradual change. So the real shadow is going on now here with the raw sienna. So this is my fourth and my darkest color. And again, I'm popping this on top of the amber before the amber has a chance to dry out. So hopefully it's blending as we go. Uh, I'm going to use this, you know, reasonably strongly here. I said I used it sparingly on other parts of the face mask, but this left hand part of the face mask is in quite a lot of shadow. So I'm using the raw sienna in quite a big quantity here. Notice how when I'm doing this large body of raw sienna, I leave a little bit on that upper cheek bone here. And I also leave a little bit here, just amber showing through as we get towards his uh, sort of metal lips. You know, I don't want it to be too solid. I'm going to blend those in later using a bit more of the amber color. But it just stops you having a big flat area of the same color on the face and gives you a bit of variety and suggests this, you know, sort of a curve and the light striking different parts of it. There you go, you can see me using that amber there just to blend that in. And I'm also using the amber to blend in the quite a lot of the raw sienna that I put on that bottom part uh, of the right hand side of his face mask. That's it, almost finished, and I'm quite happy with the blending. I think I could have done it better if I'd perhaps used a greater range of markers, maybe a lighter marker than saffron and a couple of others in between amber and the raw sienna. I hope you find it a useful tutorial video. And if you haven't seen the full speed drawing of me drawing Iron Man's face in orange and purple, then there is a link below.